we are going to talk about one of the greatest countries in the world and on economics nowadays. Famous for the great dishes like the fish and chips, the tea, Mr. Bean, the football, and One Direction. But we are not here to talk about One Direction. We will talk about the British literature. In fact, me and Frank were going to submerge you into this amazing world. And we decided not to do a PowerPoint, but I laid wise truth to tell us why. Last week I gave a fire safety talk <clears throat> and nobody paid any attention. It's my own fault for using PowerPoint. PowerPoint is boring. People learn in lots of different ways. We support your idea, do I? But we hope before we start, I'm going to ask Julio, please, Julio, sit down. Yes, you, Julio, please sit down. Thank you very much, Julio. So now get into your seats and relax because this is the British literature. First things first, the British. To talk about the first Britons, we need to go back to the year 400 after Christ with the Anglo-Saxons. They came from Germany and Norway. Some of them didn't like to fight. In fact, these people had a saying, no swords, but hogs. But eventually they were the first one killed. And the real Anglo-Saxon silver spine used their armor to fight against the rivals. Let's focus a bit with the Anglo-Saxons with the arrival of Christianity, which, which was important. Fran from the future, could you please explain to the people when the Christian arrived to England, to England please? Okay, thank you very much, Frank, from the future. Let's continue with Harold from the past. Thank you, Frank, from the future. One important king that influenced the literature on the British people was Alfred the Great, basically the man who made England. Harold from the future, can you talk a little bit more why he is so important? Absolutely, hello from the future. My pleasure. Beowulf is an old English epics poem consisted of 3,182 alternative lines. And it is one of the most important and most often translated works of old English literature. The only certain dating for his manuscript uh, is produced between the year 975 to the year 1025. The story is set in Scandinavia in the sixth century. And if you don't want to read the story, there is a movie called Beowulf directed by the director from Back to the Future, Robert Zemeckis. Basically, Beowulf was the twilight of the Asian civilization.
the Anglo-Norman period from 1066 to the year 1500, also known as the age of Chaucer. George Chaucer is considered one of the first great English poets. He's the author of such works as the Parliament of Fowls, Trollies and Crescent, and the Canterbury Tales. Humorous and profound like in these times, it is Russell Brand. Seriously? If you don't know who is Russell Brand, look for him right now. Well, back to Chaucer, his writing show him to be an accurate observe, observer of his time with a command of many literature genres. Let's talk about the literature of the Middle Ages. And no doubt we're going to start talking about the most renowned English poet, William Shakespeare. Do not confuse him with Chespirito, right? William Shakespeare is the best British writer in all time. His many words are about life, love, death, revenge, grief, envy, murder, magic, and mystery among others. Some of his famous or most famous words are Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, and Hamlet. Daniel Defoe is best known as the writers of the novels Robinson Crusoe and Maud Flanders. No, wait, that's modern Flanders. Yes, the Maud Flanders. During his lifetime, he gained fame and notoriety for his poems, political pamphlets, and journalism. Thank you. Jonathan Swift, and no, he has nothing to do with the singer of You Belong With Me, Taylor Swift. Okay, Jonathan Swift, he was an Anglo-Irish author who is widely regarded as the foremost prose satirist in the English language. Harold from the future, could you continue, please? Now, let's go to this amazing period of literature, the Romantic and Gothic literature in the 1800s. Jane Austen is one of the most famous writers in English literature. Her books are read by people all over the world and have been made into countless TV, films, theaters, and radio adaptations. This is all the more impressive 
because she only wrote six full-length novels. Frank from the future, could you continue, please? Thank you. The novel that would become Pride and Prejudice was probably written in 1796, and originally the title was supposed to be First Impression, which led us to the most important question in the English literature. Uh, could you please, Harold, from the future? Yes, Harold from the future. Mr. Mr. Darcy was based on Earl of Morley, who was a British aristocrat who served in the House of Lords and who was involved in a sordid sex scandal to lead to a divorce. In 1809, Morley's second wife was a friend of Jane Austen and his brother Henry, a new heir from, from high school. Charles Dickens was a British novelist journalist, editor, illustrator, and social commenter who wrote short, such beloved classic novels as Oliver Twist, Christian Caron, Nicholas Nickley, David Copperfield, and Great Expectation. When he become, became famous, only rich people could afford to buy books. Dickens publishes his stories in sections in cheaper magazines, so poor people could read them. Frank from the future, could you share four facts about Charles Dickens, please? Okay, but it doesn't end here. We need to talk about more important people like Mary Shelley, who was a British author who wrote the world famous Frankenstein. That novel was a reflection of Mary's own sense of alienation and isolation. Harold, could you please continue? Thank you, Harold from the future. Stoker's Dracula was instrumental in the creation of the vampire trope that was permitted in Western popular culture in forms of novel and films alike. Dracula was well received when it was published, but its success is even better measured by the number of adaptations that it inspired. This leads us to Oscar Wilde, another author of Gothic fiction, born in Ireland. Oscar Wilde's reputation rests largely on his novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, and of, on his masterful comedies of, of manner, Lady Windermere fans, fan, and the importance of being earnest. He was also known for his wit his flamboyance and his traits and jail sentence for homosexuality acts. From the late 1800 to the present, now we can talk about Arthur Conan Doyle. Seriously, he was a British writer and physician. He created the character Sherlock Holmes in 1887 for a study in Scarlet. The first of four novels and 56 short stories about Holmes and Dr. Watson. Yes. This information is elementary, my dear Watson. I mean, 
in Frank. Well, Herbert George Wells, he was an English novelist, a journalist, sociologist, and historian best known for such science fiction novels as The Time Machine and The War of the Worlds. Harold from the future, could you help me? There was something called modernism, and which was based on a stream of consciousness, sort of a literary technique from James Joyce and Virginia Woolf from the 1920s. Uh, they are two of the most famous examples of modernism with their novel Ulysses and Mrs. Dalloway, which is a novel that takes place in one day and it is based mostly on a stream of consciousness of this woman's inner monologue. <clears throat> the novels of James Joyce are difficult to read and understand what's happening. Basically like any David Lynch movie. So that is called modernism. George Orwell, whose real name was Eric Arthur Blair, was a novelist, is saying and critic best known for his novel Animal Farm in 1984. He was a man of strong opinions who addressed some of the major political movements of his times, including imperialism, fascism, and communism. His book, 1984, is one of the Orwell's best credit for novels, and it remains one of the most powerful warnings even issued against the danger of a totalitarian society in Spain, German, Germany, and the Soviet Union. Owen had witnessed the danger of absolutely political authority in an age of advanced technology. Okay, 1984 was banner from those countries under the leadership of oppositive regimes. These censorship began with St Stalin in the 1950. Recently, China banned all copies for, of 1984 in their country. And he's arrived. From the 1970s today, we can forget John Ronald Rule Tolkien, who wrote The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and is the most famous example of fantasy literature that come out from Britain, unless you count J.K. Rowling Harry Potter series. We can say that J.K. Rowling is the most successful author in history, right, Harold? and chance to purchase her dreams of being published long and hard enough to make it come true. <clears throat> Even if... <clears throat> Even if she had one review ever, she just wanted to write, so that's what she did. We are so glad you were here in this presentation. We led you with the biographies used to create this video. Now you can stay with Harold and Fran from the future. So thank you so much. <laughs>